Hey, what's up, y'all? It's poppin' it's D. About to react to this vid by Blair White. So I reacted to uh, a different video from Blair White uh, talking about the fat acceptance movement. And someone just randomly sent me that vid, so I watched it. I didn't know anything about her at all, but I had so many people being like, ew, why are you reacting to Blair White? And I'm just like, oh, what? <laughs> What does she do? What's the problem? So I don't know anything about her, but apparently she's very controversial or something like that. I don't know. But she's also trans, which I kind of suspected when I was watching the video, but I didn't think it was relevant to the topic, so I just left it alone. But yes, yeah, she's trans or whatever, and she has released this video that somebody told me to check out. It's titled, I went to therapy to figure out why I'm transgender. Okay, let, let's hear what she got to say. Let's watch. You think trans probably a trauma response. It's interesting. And it's not politically correct to say, don't care. And then my dad, he was abusive, mm -hmm. physically. Yeah. Maybe he needed to die so you could be safe. I'm not gonna let anyone hurt you. You're safe, I got you. Why is that making me cry? <laughs> this is very interesting. Because I've never heard a trans person say this, like ever. Because you making this comment, it, it sounds like you're basically stating that it, it's a choice. And what I've always heard from trans people is that it's, it's not a choice. Just like being gay, for example, it's not a choice. Like You can't control what you're sexually attracted to and what gets you aroused. So that's not a choice. But you're saying that this was due to trauma. That That's like more so a choice. So I feel like this is kind of actually damaging and this will probably make people not take trans people seriously if they're just like, hmm, well, there's people in this community who are choosing to be this way. Like, it's not as scientific as y'all try to make it seem. Like, I could hear that being some people's arguments because, yeah, like I said, in comparison with being gay, it's like, it's, it's, it's literally <laughs> just what you're naturally attracted to. Like, it's not something that you can control, you know? You don't choose to be gay, but anyway. Not in my adult life recently, right. like scattered throughout my Because I would never say that I, I chose to be, I'm gay because of trauma or I'm gay because of something that I experienced. It's like, no, it's just because this is what I'm attracted to, you know? My parents took me to a therapist, or my mom did, uh, when I was young, like, observed a lot of, I guess now that I'm thinking of it, really, like, bad issues I was having as a kid. What issues? Uh, I recently talked to her on the phone, and she was kind of, we're kind of opening up about the past in my childhood now, because I had a super bad upbringing, and uh, I'm finally in the space to kind of, like, look at it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm more interested in doing therapy and, like, learning, I'm on neuroscience a lot lately, like, right. learning about how the brain works, learning about repressed memories, which I've also experienced recently. And uh, just kind of understanding the past to mm -hmm. get a better grip on the present. Yep. So yeah. yeah. When you say you had like a you had bad childhood. Oh yeah. What was going on in the house? A lot, a lot. Oh my God. So you grew up in uh, Northern California, a small town. Very small town, Northern yeah. California. Brothers, sisters. I had a half brother. Uh huh. And uh, my mom and my dad and two dogs. So like super uh -huh. like normal nuclear family type deal. But you know I was definitely born into a lot of trauma from them like what they had from their lives for me sure and uh i definitely had no allies growing up let's put it that way right i was like one bitch against the world huh. one bitch army so is there any time. meaning that you've 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 made of it or just oh, stress um definitely there's a, that there's a lot to understand about what got me here which is uh, like honestly such a beautiful life as much as i can harp on like the negative things i went through as a kid like i love my life now i've really become the exact person that like childhood me needed, like, in many ways. Um, I've actually corrected a lot of patterns I was born into from my parents and my family. Did you feel alone in your family? Super. And alone in your town, I guess? I mean, you're obviously were, you're different from a, a yeah. very young age. Yeah, and everyone saw it, even before me, actually. Everyone saw it? Yeah. That must have been, how was that? It was twofold. It was painful because I endured a lot of bullying, but also I wouldn't take it back for the world because I learned so much from it. And I know that people can feel a certain way about hearing that. Um, I'm not saying kids should be bullied, especially not necessarily the way I was, which was yeah. like relentless, you know, getting called a faggot in preschool, which is like, I didn't know the word faggot. You know what I mean? It just yeah. happened. I was like, what is that? So, you know. Because you were a feminine at a... Yeah, yeah. Right out of the gate. Oh yeah, it was, I was there. You were there. Basically out the womb. 
That's what my parents said. said. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how, how did your parents respond to that? Well, it was bizarre. Like, my mom was totally fine with it. And then my dad, I listen, I don't want to necessarily say everything that he was, because I haven't been open about that with anyone mm -hmm. on camera, mm -hmm. even in real life yet. But uh, he was, you know, a really bad person, you know, a really dark, damaged person that passed a lot of his darkness into me. Was, so, was that just in, in his energy or was he acting actions, out on that? Actions. Was he, he was abusive mm -hmm. physically? Yeah, I don't want to necessarily say exactly what form of abuse, but like, you mm -hmm. know, the kind that will give you trauma. Right. For sure. And maybe come up in repressed memories when you're 30, which wow. I learned is actually very common. Repressed memories. Mm, well, that it can happen that late. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I never sure. knew that, you know. I had like a narrative once I escaped my hometown and my family. Escaped. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a narrative that once I escaped, I was good. I didn't have any problems, you know. I'm the first entrepreneur in my family. I'm the first self-made person. I'm the first person to um, move out of my hometown, really, that uh -huh. little area at least, uh, and to break a lot of the curses that they have. Like, in yeah. So I had this narrative in my head that I'm good. I'm the only good one in my family. Right. And in some ways I am, but yeah. there's a lot of damage that I'm realizing is there, so now I'm fixing it. Interesting. So are you angry at all about... Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess your mom, maybe your mom, but your dad, uh, see what she he was doing. abusive and... Him I don't have any grace for. Um, I don't really know. Why? Just because of the specific type of monster he was. You I don't, don't really forgive know him. How. No. Chica. Yeah. No, and I also don't relate to the people who are like, forgiving's about you. It's like, yeah. is it? I mean, people say it, so maybe you really feel that way, but yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. You know, I'm more interested in healing whatever damage he did. Right. Which to me, that's making it about me. That's a, that's prioritizing myself. Yeah. I don't need to just say some mantra of like, I forgive him because it's about him and not me. Right. That's weird to me. Did you, did, do you, have you, well, I guess you haven't done a lot of therapy, so you don't really know, but I don't know if you intuit, like, what was the meaning you made of that, like the child, uh, that your father's abusive towards you? Because, the, the, you know, the father is a very powerful figure in our, in our lives as a, as a, as an archetype. And mm -hmm. um, if we're being abused by the father and he's not there for us, uh, creating safety, and that's really the primary job of the father. Um, how did, did you, do you have any sense of like the meaning you made of that? No, because, well, again, it's kind of twofold to answer. But he let you down. Oh, for sure, worse than that, you know. Worse just than like, that. Failure, flop, monster, evil. But, you know, a lot of it, a lot of the actions on his part were actually buried deep down in my psyche. So they didn't start coming up until about 29, 30. So in one way, I didn't make any sense of it. But then also, what's really fascinating about that is like my body always knew that he was like a demon. Like, uh -huh. not in the literal sense, but you know, bad too for me to be around dark, like I said. Because I remember, you know, the only real memories I have of him are always hating him but not knowing why. Mm, you always hated him? Yeah, he'd walk in the room and I would tell him like, you know, get the fuck away from me for no reason, completely unwarranted. And in fact, the last thing I ever said to him, this is gonna sound crazy, is I hope you get cancer and fucking die, you fucking cunt. I was like 17, or 18. And uh, it was triggered by him asking me to take the trash out. And I just said that from the top of the stairs and he looked at me with basically a knowledge that he deserved it, like he didn't fight back. Which was interesting. He knew. Mm -hmm. I think. I, I believe. And then, this is actually the crazy part. Two weeks later, he got cancer and died. Out of wow. nowhere, full body cancer. So, wow. I don't know what that means. But the, I said that to say that I never had a logical, concrete reason as a kid to hate him, but I always knew I did. Well, you know, you had logical, concrete reasons to hate him. No, yeah, but the repressed memories, I, I didn't actually growing up remember what he had done to me specifically, and it's a right. very specific thing he did. So, I just always still felt the energy of what that action was, and it made me hate him forever. And he was very deserving of it, so. Interesting, what, yeah. you know, he, he did something to you that was dark and scary and uh, painful. For sure. And you now live with that, and you're, you're becoming aware mm -hmm. that that's inside you, the, the impact of that, and it's unresolved, and it's having an impact on your life today. Is that fair? Yeah, it's, it's had a huge impact now that I have more clarity on the entirety of my life. Um, but it was only once those memories came up again that I could kind of see that, oh, that's why I do that. That's why my brain works like that. That's why I have this view of this thing that is whatever, you know? Yeah. You know, is it in you? Do you think, do you think yeah. there's some, it's in you, mm -hmm. that darkness? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's part of... Is it scary? No. No? Because I... Do you know it? Mm -hmm. You sure? Mm-hmm. Maybe not fully, because <laughs> right, I'm always right. learning. But, yeah, I, yeah. but I know that, you know, I, like everyone, is capable of good and evil. Right. And, of course, it's in me, but, you know, like anything. Well, it's you, in all of us. Yeah. 
you just learn how to hone it and use it for good. I, I feel like you either heal it or you spread it. Mm -hmm. You heal it mm -hmm. or you lash out at the world. Right. And I lash out at the world at certain times. Right. You know, one of the criticisms criticisms of me, and it's correct, it used to be a lot more, but it's still sometimes correct, is that I get a little angry. You know, online, like my tone of voice sometimes will be very right. angry, which is passion and which is fire, but also is anger. And it just it just makes me think of your father and, and the last thing you said to him, what, what, you know, I hope you die of cancer, you cunt. As I hope you fucking get cancer and die, yeah. you fucking cunt. Right. Which is crazy. It's a curse. But then I always think about, like, how crazy is it that he really got cancer and died two weeks later? Yeah, that's wild. Okay, I'm not going to watch the entire video. It's 30 minutes long, but I'll leave the link down below. Of course, you guys can check it out. But I do feel like uh, this is important to consider just in general when people are a certain type of way you have to consider why are they that way again i don't know the details about why she is so controversial and why people had that reaction when i reacted to her and saying like ew why are you watching her why are you reacting to her but <laughs> whatever it is you, you you have to keep <laughs> these things in mind and it doesn't mean that that makes them exempt from um criticism or whatever the case doesn't mean you have to be sympathetic uh to what they've gone through but i just think it helps to keep you know that in mind uh whatever she's guilty of <laughs> i don't care enough to look deeper into you know why she's so controversial to be honest with you i'm not about to go through her damn channel and look at several videos and try to put the pieces together and figure out why you know some people don't like her she does not affect my life personally so whatever she's saying or doing it it doesn't you know matter to me to be honest um but yeah i do think that's very interesting the comment that she made um about how being trans is a trauma response um i've just never heard a trans person say that like literally ever um but yes very very interesting to see y'all let me know what y'all think though let me know what other videos you're gonna watch and i'll see you on the next one bye